SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster No. 3, which had earlier been stacked at the company's high bay facility, just made its first public appearance last week. The vehicle was rolled out through Boca Chica's Highway 4 on July 1, 2021, to a modified section of Pad A, where it is expected to begin cryo-testing. Known as Booster No. 3 or BN3, this angel-less booster is expected to undergo a series of pressure tests in the upcoming weeks at the company's South Texas launch facility, named Starbase by the company, to estimate the credibility of some of the key components. But before we dive in, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel to stay tuned to all the exciting news in the space industry. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time we upload new content. So, let's dive in, shall we? We've been watching BN3's construction very excitedly as this was hoped to be the first ever super heavy booster to fly into orbit. Or at least, that's what we thought. But earlier this week, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's tweet made it clear that BN3 is just going to be a production pathfinder, just like the BN1, and it won't be the first one to take off. BN3 is expected to undergo a bunch of tests in the upcoming week, including cryo and pressure tests ahead of BF4's launch. Now, BF4 is hoped to be the first ever super heavy booster that will fly into orbit with SN20 on its top, and the flight is expected to take place next month. The first segments of BN4 have been spotted and the stacking process will soon be initiated inside the high bay. As for the SN20 Starship, it is still in the process of assembly. If we compare the construction of BN20 to earlier Starship prototypes from SN8 to SN15, it seems like SN20 has spent a lot more time under construction. But there are a number of reasons why SN20, the first orbital class rocket, is likely taking a little bit longer than the previous test vehicles. First of all, SpaceX is putting its efforts to improve the ground infrastructure in order to support the upcoming launches. And therefore, more priority is being given to the groundwork as compared to the Starship SN20. Secondly, since SN20 is aiming for an orbital launch, unlike the previous 10km hops test, it needs to fly a lot faster, but more importantly be able to withstand the sheer heat of re-entry burn. Therefore, the prototype needs much testing in order to give a green signal for its launch. After the orbital launch of BN20, it'll re-enter the atmosphere and will perform the flip maneuver followed by a landing burn before its touchdown. SpaceX and Elon Musk are very confident that they'll be able to reach orbit. But if for some reason, the launch doesn't go as planned, there is nothing to worry about as the production of SN21 has already begun. And some people have spotted the initial layers of SN21 being stacked in the high bay. The rollout of BN3 was perhaps the highlight of the Starship this week. And the people who came to see the event seemed very excited to watch this monster being rolled out of the facility for the first time. At the orbital launch site, the sixth section of the orbital launch tower was finally lifted after spending quite a lot of time. This delay was probably due to poor weather at the facility. Fitting such a massive steel section requires an insane amount of precision. Therefore, it has been placed very carefully and now only two sections left to be installed. It is still unclear what the final configuration of the launch mount would look like, but it is possible that the additional support will go in before the launch table is integrated with the rest of the mount. Besides all this, another exciting news at the Starbase this week was the delivery of the first ever Raptor vacuum engine. Three of these giant Raptors are to be used to power SN20 flight in a couple of months. At the MWC 2021, Elon Musk stated that SpaceX is going to do their best to do their orbital test launch attempt in the next few months. He also reassured that SpaceX will have an orbital-capable booster, along with the orbital launch site, already within the next month or so. To further clarify this, he took to Twitter and said, There is the internal goal if things go right, which needs to be aggressive. Obviously, some things will not go right internally and there will be external issues too. That said, I think we can stack an orbital ship on an orbital booster in July. 
So that seems to be a pretty big claim. But let's see how things go. Besides this, we also saw the launch of Transporter 2. The launch took place from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Wednesday, June 3rd, and the launch took the payload of 133 individual aircrafts. The booster that pushed the D-stage out of the atmosphere was flown for the eighth time, with missions such as GPS-3, Turkstat 5A, and five Starlink missions already flown. You could tell that by looking at the rusty appearance of the booster as it landed back at the landing zone 1. It is worth noting that this mission was delayed after a scrub the previous day with Elon Musk tweeting afterwards that this is due to aircraft entering the keep out zone, adding that there is simply no way that humanity can become a space-faring civilization without major regulatory reform. The current regulatory system is broken. A few new announcements have been made in the Starlink project this week. With all the 72 planes to be active sometime in August, along with better coverage and other improvements, this is definitely going to become a significant source of revenue in a very rapid time frame. Since the service hasn't been fully functional yet, the customers' reviews have been a little mixed. But once SpaceX completes the process of deploying its satellites, that is going to make a big difference. Once the deployment process is completed, SpaceX is claiming that users can expect up to 100 Mbps of download speeds, with 20 Mbps of upload speeds. This is going to be a game-changer for people living in the remote areas, who currently do not have access to the Internet whatsoever. Elon Musk also jokingly tweeted that Starlink's simultaneously active users just exceeded that strategically important threshold of 69 for 20 last night. With a $99 per month fee, Starlink is costing $7 million per month to SpaceX in service fees. That doesn't even include the setup fee and any margins on equipment being delivered to the users. Despite all this, it is just the tip of an iceberg, with Elon Musk hoping to grow that user base to half a million over the next two months. Even more interesting was the information shared talking about how Starlink services are being looked at for aircraft, specifically focusing on the Boeing 737 and A320s, given that they have the ability to serve most of the people. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more quality content related to the SpaceX industry. Until next time, bye for now.